I'm the mechanic, not really. It's KTM Juniors, and you cannot believe how fast these kids go. Hang on. So uh, let's see where Lane, my son, is. He was in sixth. That's third. That's fourth. That's fifth. Sixth place. We're battling for top five right now. We're battling for top five on the last lap. Uh, this is an amazing experience. I obviously get special access to these races every weekend. There's six. Come on, get it. Top five. You got it. You got it. top five. Go. Obviously, I get a little more attention and access than other people. Uh, but can you imagine being a parent that's never been able to go on a Supercross track, who's never had a credential, who's never been to hang out in the pits all day? This kind of a this kind of access and this kind of thing is a once in a lifetime for everybody involved. I gotta watch the finish, but uh, it's just so cool that KTM and really Fell Motorsports puts this on, and they've been doing it for 25 years. And just think, if you're a new fan of this sport, maybe you just came to check out Supercross and you wanted to see what it's like. What a great family-friendly atmosphere. We know motorcycling's a family sport, and we're totally producing that and promoting that tonight. Shoot what counts. Now, we're gonna watch the finish. We got a girl trying to win this race. This is Reagan, go is she going for the win? Watch this jump, this is nuts. This wall jump, we didn't know if the kids could do it. She airs it out, she's gonna win. Yeah, Reagan. Second place, third, fourth, fifth. Yeah, go boy. Woo! Six out of 15, we will take it baby. Sixth place! Pretty awesome. Better than I expected. We'll be back a little more. All right, uh, we're back. Um, Lane, you've been up almost 24 hours now. He's way too tired to talk, but he got six. First, he was mad that we didn't have more laps. Yeah, he's. we're at East Coast time, and it is about uh, 11 o'clock here, so that'd be 1 a.m. for him. That's an all-time record. Um, but all kidding aside to the kids' race, Phil, so what the heck happened? In the fourth of the class night. What's happened? It's, it's uh, death cross. You know, it's I, death cross. It's, it's not anything can happen. I mean, Meat grinder. I don't even understand. I feel like that's how I Phil would lose a championship. Yeah, I, I would. <laughs> that would be you. That, that would be Phil. Phil. That would be you. I don't understand how that happens with on that rhythm of Eli. How many times did you jump the jump like that? Nine million? Nine million times. Just, I don't know. No Does it just fall off? Kind of. It didn't look crazy. Like how much his ankle flex didn't look insane. No, but nope. just enough to where, I don't know, maybe it was an ongoing issue from a while ago. I was wondering that. I mean, maybe it was a bit sensitive and yeah, just kind yeah. of, yeah, but I couldn't even imagine it. The, uh, the depression state for realizing that. I know. And dude, how tough is that SOB to just ride off the track? Like he wasn't, he had a helmet on, but he didn't appear emotional. Like he was just like, well, at first I thought it was Done. a bike issue or something yes, like that. Yes, because he wasn't freaking out. No, no, no. It wasn't you like would be freaking like out. At my leg or yes. something like that. It was kind working. of just one of those working. things. But, uh, working. Yeah, working. Um, yeah, I thought it was oh, unbelievable turn of events. I'm so yeah. keeps at home right now. So oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But listen, it, that's why it's called a series. There's 17 rounds. And, yep. And it's never over till it's over. So. Unbelievable what has happened. Yep. Enzo. Making people proud down in Brazil with the heat race. With the heat race. Making people proud. You got one more. You gonna get a podium? You got one more. I just wanna be in the battle with you guys. That's all it is. Just wanna be in the battle. That's what people want me to say. Oh, oh, okay. Wants you to say in the battle. Okay. You're just taking what the mentor says. Press conference is about to begin here. I want to thank uh, Race Tech. As always, Gold Valve's back in our show. Spencer will be plusher, better bottom resistance, more traction. Made an engineer in the USA. Go to racetech.com. Um, We'll get this press conference started. We'll come back with more. Um, in one of the more wild, unpredictable nights in the history of Supercross. I don't think anybody saw this one coming. Well, obviously an emotional night because of uh, what happened to, to Eli Tomac. I just want to give credit. You, 
an hour after the race, Kate Clayson, you were here for the media scrum. Same thing with you. Hey, you were up. You were running fourth? Were you fourth for a while? No, I, uh, I started like... Did I not see that at all? No. I thought you, you were probably wrong. Heat race? Yeah. He, he raised? Oh, yeah, he raised. Right. He raised. That was what it was. Yeah. Okay, he yeah. raised. Yeah, it wasn't. Yes. Wasn't okay, yeah, all right. You were right all right. Main, no? No, 11th. 11th. Yeah. All right, that's Dylan Schwartz. You hung out for the media. You got 14? 13. 13. You were 14 at one point, though, right? 52 points in Pulp Fantasy, right? Oh, really? <laughs> well, not for me. I didn't make a team. I was a little busy. I'm just glad you did it. Yeah. I'm just glad you did it. And I mean, you're kind of... Dude, you can't no, leave the guy hanging. Oh, I didn't even realize. Why are you guys... Did I do the haircut? Dude, I want to take a picture of you. This beautiful backdrop in your semi with you and your huge mane. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Come on, Simonson. Show us the hair. St oh, my God. Top six, top six. I know. It's been discussed. It has been talked about. That's why the beanie stays on. And you have to keep it through next weekend to verify. I... I'm not sure if it's through next weekend. No, no, no. You have to appear next weekend. Yeah, yeah. You cannot cut. You cannot yeah. shave it until next weekend. Yeah. The Correct. money's in escrow. Correct. Yes. So. Oh my God, Simonson. Um, I think Friday night. It's after I see Steve, it's getting shaved. That's fine. Yes, we just need to verify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're making mains now. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah, three in a row for me. Yeah, yeah. And on the big bike, so I'm pretty stoked with that. Uh, I had a good, good main going today. Uh, yeah. I've stayed in the fight with like 13, 14, 12, 13, yeah. 14, and I, I was 15. Yep. And uh, three laps ago, I landed on a tough block. I saw you off the side of the track yeah. there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I ended up 16th, so yep. not too much to complain about. Uh, I was still pumped with the riding, just like being in there with those guys in the fight. So, yeah, uh, yeah I was pretty happy with that, honestly. Step it up. A yeah. little less weight. Carry yeah, around yeah. up top. All right, Devin Simonson, Dylan Schwartz. Thanks, Kate Place, for hanging out. That's our post-race media scrum. Let's talk about the emotions of the night and uh, what might have been. He's here for you, Lewis. He's here for you. Yep. Um, the sport is crazy. The sport is crazy with the highs and lows, and I'm going to give a little monologue here on how this works. So my day is surrounded by this uh, amazing family-friendly atmosphere, and everything about the KTM Junior Supercross Challenge is designed to be uh, all the positives and none of the negatives. It is shocking that eight-year-olds can ride a Supercross track every week, and not only are there very rarely any injuries, it doesn't even really look dangerous at all. And that's the side of the sport we all want, right? It's happy, it's fun, it's, it's family-friendly. Um, the results really aren't stressed in this race. So, you know, the typical mini bike dad being super upset that it didn't go the way they wanted. I'm sure it happens, but nothing like Loretta's or, or any of their big amateur races. It's all the positives. Um, I got to experience all that tonight. It was nothing but positive. I'm super pumped. But I know to try to go down this road and run this gauntlet and try to race more, um, it brings positives. And boy, oh boy, does it bring negatives. And that ends up being the theme of our night. There is no family in the history of the sport that has nailed the formula better than the Tomats. No one. Absolutely. Eli wanted to race motocross for the bicycles, and he and John and Kathy, they put together a program that's one of the best of all time. Okay, a couple other riders have won more races than him in certain categories. They've won more titles. But think of how few negatives there have been for Eli Tomat. How few devastating injuries. How... Uh, how few times there's been like fans mad at something he said or pissed off or uh, how many haters does this guy have? Any? Does anyone come at Tomac? They have nailed the formula and then they got nailed. A ruptured Achilles while leading in your home race and essentially having the championship wrapped up. Now it's gone. Now this title's over and let's be honest, an Achilles injury we don't have a lot of experience with this in the motocross, supercross side, but we're probably looking at a year. At that point, does Eli Tomac even come back? Is this how it ends? That's unbelievable, the swing of emotions from on the absolute top in the most well-dialed, well-executed program I feel maybe in the history of this game. And it ends like that. And then further, we go into this press conference. It might have been the best pr press conference I've ever seen because you have Chase Sexton who can't even wrap his mind around the fact that a season that has almost been defined by negativity and you've blown it again and you messed with it. He said at some point he had to stop looking at his phone because he was just getting texted with so many friends trying to offer advice or how to fix the problem. And then he'd go on Instagram and fans were just blowing him out. And he's just known as the guy who messes up and crashes all the time. Now he's gonna end up super cost champ. He absolutely cannot process that right now. That is an amazing up and down emotional 
swing for him, emotional whiplash, as Dan Beaver of NBC Sports asked about in the press conference. And then he's flanked by Adam Cincerullo, who started crying in the press conference. And he said, many, many nights, many days a week, thinking about what this would be like to be on the podium. It has been such a struggle. Yes, he's tried to have a better attitude and not live and die by the results, but he has not had pace. He has not been anywhere even close to what he used to be, and it was difficult. And he said, you know, nobody wants to see what happened to Tomac. He said, I know that there are a ton of dudes out right now, but I can't think about that. He's got to soak up the fact that he's back on the podium. And then, by the way, they were flanked by Ken Roxon, who came back from worse injuries than anyone and is on a darn Suzuki and has made that work and he's now on the podium every week and he, I don't know, can he finish second in points? Is that even possible? Third, for sure. The press conference is awesome for those guys because they had these low points that turned into high points. And that's why they were all so emotional up there and had these amazing, deep, philosophical things to say that these are guys in their 20s. They shouldn't be this smart. They shouldn't be this well-spoken. But think of how well-traveled they are and how much they've been through those highs and those lows. I mean, Sexton felt like a loser probably six or seven times this year leading races and throwing them away. He's going to end up being the Supercross champ. He is. Tomac's not racing next weekend. He's not going to come back and get points from Sexton. Sexton will win the title. Honda's going to win their first Supercross title since Ricky Carmichael in 2003. Unbelievable. But he had to walk that fire, through that fire first to get to this point. Certainly, Roxon and Cincerullo knows a thing or two about that. We will punctuate this. Uh, RJ Hampshire, congrats to him. He gets his first win of the year. Felt like he'd already won one this year, right? Because he's been so good. Said somebody told me it took seven years for me to get my first seven podiums. And this year alone, I've gotten six. And then Jet Lawrence wins the title. And uh, Jet always knows the right things to say. That's another family like the Tomax who's pretty much nailed the formula as well as you could possibly nail it. Um, he said, I'm just bummed because I was so looking forward to racing a legend like Tomac outdoors on a 450. And now, I don't know, hopefully he gets to come back at some point and I get to race him. Uh, it's just amazing the highs and lows of this deal. I mean, is there anything that has it quite to this level? And let's be honest, it's because of the injuries. Very few sports have this athletic, putting everything you have, your heart and soul physically on the line. And when you win, it's the most amazing feeling. Uh, my kid loves playing sports and loves being competitive and I very 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 rarely see him be nervous today was the first time I ever heard he actually told me we're putting our gear on before his race about a half hour before he's like I feel nervous and I was like that's the feeling that's the feeling that everybody feels it's not even a good feeling but it's a feeling that everybody lives for in this sport and it's partially on the excitement of the game but also how easily you can get hurt and it's running through everybody's mind all the time. And then the riders at this level have already been through it over and over. And they know how great it can be. And they also know how bad it can be. There's no sport in the world quite like this. And we got to see the full spectrum. I mean, I got to live it, the full spectrum tonight. And uh, I think we're all still in a bit of shock over the ruptured Achilles for Eli. And could this be the end for him? It's definitely the end of the title. Congrats to Chase Sexton, Chase Sexton and everyone in Honda. We'll see you at Salt Lake. Thanks to Race Tech. Thanks to KTM, Feld, everybody at Monster Energy Supercross for putting on a once-in-a-lifetime experience for me and my son, Lane, who got sixth and got on the TV show doing a one-legger over the finish line jump. I don't even know where he learned any of that. He barely even rides, and he's only raced two races in his life, one at Daytona and one here. I can't believe how well this went, but I don't want to get too pumped up on it because with the positives comes the negatives, and we're good for now. See you next week.